Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our live. It was taking a second. It kept going around and around. It wasn't showing. I'm checking the audio. Am I on? Am I on? Yes. Okay. So we're good to go. It was acting funny. So I wanted to check that. So good morning. I am Heather. We come to you live each and every day, Monday through Thursday. So you learn about Luminous, what we have to offer, anything and everything. Um, I obviously start with no makeup on and then we go through and um and learn about luminous and so i labeled this one how is your airbrush journey going or how is your airbrushing going because i know that hey lori i know that um people that first start hey andrea um they're they're putting airbrush on like traditional makeup they're you know it's they're not doing it the correct way and so what we do in these lives is I show you the correct way to airbrush because it is kind of retraining our brain into thinking luminous versus traditional makeup. Cause people are like, Oh, I can airbrush, but they're putting way too much on. So when you're applying the makeup, it should never feel wet or sticky. It, um, it should feel like your natural skin. It should never look cakey all of that and so those are things that you have to kind of navigate through um to make sure that you are doing it correctly um my halloween was great how was you how was y'all's we had a lot of uh trick-or-treaters like a lot normally um i don't know it just seemed like to be a lot more this year um and in my neighborhood they really like go all out they um will like streets put on a big thing like it is crazy <laughs> so it was fun to uh to see everything to have fun like there's one street that they do one house will do gumbo and frito pies and another house does like popcorn and hot chocolate and then another house does like hot dog like it's this huge thing it's really fun so the kids had fun. So that's what matters. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, again, I'll probably, um, going to use, I'll use my traditional concealer I, that I did bring because with airbrush, it's not the all or nothing. You know, remember you can do traditional makeup. If I can find it, traditional makeup, um, with airbrush. And so that's another reason I love it. Good morning, Veronica. Um, that's another reason I love it just because, especially under the eyes, if you spray too heavy under the eyes, it's going to look cakey. It's going to look too much. And so if you can get the foundation down and, and perfect that, then you can use, this is sticking out and it's really bothering me. Okay. Uh, you can use a traditional concealer and then just airbrush over that until you get um, better at airbrushing. Because every time you have this in your hands, um, it's going, you're learning. You're going to learn something each and every day. Um, and then pretty soon you'll be like, you don't even have to think about it. You just know what to do. Oh, really? That's weird. I don't know why. All right. So um, I do like to put concealer on with a natural brush. Um, I will put it on. And like you can already tell, like this is traditional makeup, right? So you put it on, you have that demarcation line or you see the opaqueness but then you have to blend it. And that's why I do like using a natural hairbrush because most concealer brushes are so like stiff that I don't want to pull. I'm noticing a lot of wrinkles and crinkles around my eyes and uh, under my eyes and stuff. So I don't want to pull heavy on that um, under eye area because that's real thin and we need to be very delicate with it. And so, I mean, guys, look, you see, I'm like blending, 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 like all over. I'm not just sticking like right here. I blend it down. I'm going to cover that with the airbrush makeup. Okay. So that's fine. 
what it'll end up doing is giving me a little bit more of a polished look, a little bit more of a, of a made up look, but not that thick, heavy, cakey look, if that makes sense. And then I can even <clears throat> use it on my lid as like a primer. Okay. And I get it in my creases around my nose. My nose is always red. So I use my concealer because I'm and the reason I'm blending it out is because I want it thin. I don't want it thick. I don't want it um, cakey feeling. I want it very thin uh, feeling. And so blending this and moving it around is doing that. It's helping me thin that out a little bit, but where I still have that coverage. Now, the other thing, um, let me see if I have any powder. Not really, but the other thing you would want to do is powder this because it is traditional and it is the one I'm using is kind of a cream. And so I want to set it now. That's all I need to do. Like that's how much powder I needed. So when I, it's very little, 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 little powder. It's just to set it. Um, if you have like a translucent powder, you can just literally dip your brush in, doo -doo -doo, tap it off and boop, boop, that's it. That's it. I'm not. Um, you don't need a lot by any means. Okay. So now... Like, what do I want to do now? Nose it. Um, I'll go in and do, uh, I'll do a little bit of the matte bronzer. And I'm not going to contour a lot. I'm going to contour very light. So I'm only going to use about two drops of my matte bronzer. Now, I'll show you. The matte bronzer is super dark. So... If I spray too heavy, um, it's going to um, it's going to look too dark. But how airbrush makeup goes on, it's like little pixels. So if I kept going, kept going, kept going, it'll get darker. But if I just need a little bit, it'll be light enough. That my concealer. Uh, no, honestly, I don't remember where I got it. Uh, it's probably one that I'm just drawing out. All right. So now I'm going to take my contouring. And so I'm going to contour, you know, like here, here. I'm going over my traditional concealer. And see, very light. Down my neck, of course. Probably more down there. Get rid of that chin. And that's all I'm going to do. So I'm doing it very, very light. Because when you contour, because we know we've had a lot of people that um never contoured and then we started doing some contouring and then they were like oh I'll try it out and they started contouring they love it but you don't have to go from like one to a hundred you know you can take baby steps so you can even contour with a shade or two darker um than your your foundation shade and that's enough um contouring for you you don't have to do major harsh contouring by any means all right, so now I'm going to add a little bit of blush. And then, Andrea, did I say hi to you? I can't remember if I did or not. And I'm going right above that contour. And that's it. That is all. Now, we know that our that our blush does bloom. So a little bit does go a long way. I am going to run some water through this 
um, just because I went from the dark brown matte to a blush. So I'm just not cl really cleaning it, but just running water through. Now, <clears throat> I still don't have my three, so I'm going to mix shade five and two. Yeah, the concealers, um, most concealers are not gonna have an oil base um, when you're using them, but yeah, if you, you'll definitely want to use a, um, <clears throat> a uh, oil-free. I had to take I had to take the top off, so I did a couple of drops of the two. Is this two? Yeah. And then shaking up my three. Just kidding. The five. And a couple of drops of that. Now I'm going to mix those together by turning it on, blocking the air, letting it bubble. Sounds like I'm screaming or something. And then I can close that down. Now I have my tissue. When I change colors, I always blow it on a tissue first, just so I know that that's the color I'm getting um, and, and doing it that way. So making my passes. I make one complete pass and then I go in and cover anything that I need to cover. Can blend it down here because we know our face doesn't stop here right we need to blend it all the way down i now have some sunspots here that i want to get and then that's all the coverage i need now i'm going to blow the rest of that product out i can put this is water that I have in here. So I have water. And I'm just blowing that out. Doing a little bit of back bubbling and blowing it out. All right. So there we are. Clean. Now, so already I have contour, blush, foundation, all of that already on put all my bottles up um so the only thing that i have left is foundation and or <clears throat> foundation eyeshadow uh and lips because everything else was done with airbrush in a touchless way except the concealer so again if you are just doing the foundation you can do a regular concealer you can do the foundation with airbrush you can add a um you can contour with like the cut one palette or the cut two palette. You can do regular blush if you want. It's up to you. But I always say, oops, sorry guys, hold on. I always tell people like you need to push it. So we'll get comfortable doing what we do, but you want to push it a little bit so that um, you're learning more, right? We always want to learn. We always want to um get better at what we do. So we have to push the envelope a little. All right. So now I always teach you guys, like you don't need a lot to make it look amazing. And so remember that I already have eye sh um, a concealer on my lids. So that works as a, um, like a, a um, primer, but because it's a concealer, it also gives me kind of a natural highlight, like a neutral highlight on my lid. So I can work with just one color because I already have it light. So if I want to go in and just do something in my crease, I can do that and get away with it because I already have the contrasting color. Does that make sense? So to show you this, I'm going to use the black in the nude and naughty palette and you know we think of black as being very um oh that's going to be some drama and smoky eye it does not have to be a smoky eye i'm using the blending brush and i put it boop, down right like that knock off the extra and then i'm just going to start it right here because wherever that first hit is is where most of the makeup's going to go now depending on the look i want i can just stay 
right here. And that's not a smoky eye at all, but I'm still using the black. Let's go to this side. So I'm not moving it. I'm just making almost a V shape, but I never pick up the, the brush. So I'm just like, bam, boo, doo, 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 back and forth without picking up the brush. Now, if I wanted to go a little bit, and of course we would blend this out. Right now I'm just adding that color. Okay, so this, I mean, you can definitely do it just like that, but you want all these harsh edges, you want to blend. So I go back and start making my strokes a little bit bigger. And I'm taking, I have a Q-tip here, or Q-tip paper, Kleenex, whatever this thing's called. Okay. And so again, not a huge, not a big old smoky eye, but it is giving me some drama. Now, if I look at this and I'm like, oh, that's a, too, too bright too, or too dark or whatever the case may be, I can go in and take a lighter color, the color of my concealer basically, and go in and put it there and then it's going to soften it. So working in that kind of reverse order, normally we'd go in and do an overall neutral color, then come in and bring the crease. If we do the crease first, we're able to use that to soften the look a bit. So you don't have to worry about it getting too much or just start off slow and then you can um, keep adding if you want. Now I can take my brush, my angle brush. And line underneath. I'm actually lining with the dark, um, the dark brown. I did use the black on the lid. But then the dark brown. And so looking straight into a mirror, you can tell like there's a little harsh edge there. So I can kind of bump that up a little bit. Can blend it. And blend that away and there you go and then finishing that off with mascara um, um i'll be set now let's see now i'll take my ballet pink a little does go a long way And there we go. Done and done her. So it really is easy, guys. With airbrushing, you want to make sure you're doing it the right way. If it feels <clears throat> wet or sticky, then you know that you're spraying too heavy. Just go lighter on that trigger. If you get a hot spot, like it goes, <clears throat> tap it out, and then just keep going. There's, you really, honestly, you can't make mistakes. Um, and so, but practice makes perfect you're going to practice you're going to learn how it works and every time you have this guy in your hand you're learning and you're getting better and better so don't give up it'll be amazing and it does everything we say it's going to do you just have to make sure you're airbrushing the correct way so all right guys thank you so much for joining me on this thursday I hope everybody has a great day today and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.